Good morning, everyone. We are here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. This is Brooklyn Live. If you've never seen it, we've been doing it for three years. There or thereabouts, pretty much every Thursday, uh, we do a couple of haircuts and we share some techniques. So if you want to learn from, uh, from me and learn my technique, you can check me out every Thursday on Facebook Live. They stay living in the cloud, unless there's a blackout, and there was a blackout yesterday, but I think it should all be back now. We've got two great models today. We're going to do a razor cut, and we're going to do a long razor layer with bangs. We always do the consultations live, so you can get to see the kind of uh, communication that is required to be a successful stylist. And uh, let me share you tidbits of information. It's a perfect place for you to ask questions, uh, see if you have any questions for us you want to discuss. It's also a great place for me to share where I will be because I really do work uh, a lot uh, all over the country pushing forward my, uh, my brand, my product, and my education. So I hope you can continue to tune in. We've been having a lot of fun with it and we've got two great models today. So we're here, we're live, it's Brooklyn. We call it Brooklyn Live. So let's go and see Lena. We're gonna cut Lena's hair first. And Lena is cool for a minute there. I lost myself. I did lose myself, but now I'm back. What are we gonna do, Lena? Show me the magic. Okay, so I love the fact that Dana thought it was. <laughs> I mean, she kind of looks like her. I, was in that I love the fact that you was like, I know who that is. So confident. That's definitely not Michael Jackson. That is definitely not Michael Jackson, is it? <clears throat> maybe. May maybe. Rebecca says maybe. Know. So we're going to do this razor bob, but without the bangs. no bangs. She does not want bangs. So let's do it. She's got an undercut already. Are these fresh razors, Dana? Yes. Come and say hello to Dana. Dana Hi. is our resident. Um... So hello. She's our resident. <laughs> she's, she's, she, no, she's our resident, you know, uh, stylist that tells us who's who on Instagram. She knows. She's very committed. You're working so well. You're working so well. You're working so well. You're, I work so well. Uh, see, my voice is, is uh, <clears throat> croaky. Croaky Bob. Ian says hello. Hello, Ian. Amanda says this hello. Way or this way. Which way? Um, this way. Okay. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Eileen also says hello. So I'm in the car yesterday driving and somebody calls me from. Uh, and it's an English number, I'm with my kids, and I pick up the phone, and it's this, this guy from Scotland. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. He wants to come on a class, which was kind of nice. <laughs> I was like, I thought it might be my sister or my, co my niece. And it was, uh, it ain't there, Nikki. I said, no, it might be online right now. I think his name's Jackie. Very cute. He's, he wants to learn razor cutting, so. Quick, simple, we'll be teaching this weekend in LA how to work with a razor. I met some famous Japanese hairdressers yesterday. They use the razor very differently to me. I like to put it in the two fingers, push, control, and the movement is with the thumb. So that's how I control it and then that's how I, that's how I hold it. And notice how this pointer finger is the lock. It's the lock of the cut. So, looks like um, Lena has been getting, um, she had an undercut. It looks very choppy and very shaggy and loose. So we're gonna bring a little bit of consistency to it with the cut. It's easy to get the look on all of these shapes, but it's hard to get the look to look spectacular. So now we're gonna go to get the look to look spectacular. I always use Hydro Mist. If you get to see us at the trade show this past weekend, you'll know that I spray Hydro Mist in a lot. That's my styling product. It's a spray conditioner. It's kind of like, goes hand in hand with my haircut. What does this say under here? It's a Chinese, Chinese what? Okay, she's got a good look. She's like a little, she's like a walking story. She's a gem. 
So we're gonna cut right to the baseline underneath right here. I'm gonna have uh, my friend here help me, Dana, my celebrity spotter. <laughs> <laughs> you know Lady Gaga's in a play in Brooklyn. <laughs> She's choreographed. Lady Gaga, you gotta go and see her sometime. She might be a little taller, a little fatter, a little plumper. Yeah. That's a whole other story. You have to stick around to find out about that one. So with a razor, we're gonna take the first section. This is quite a healthy section. This stuff here was undercut. So this is the shorter piece. So let's keep it nice and clean. I got a fresh straight edge razor and I'm just gonna place it into the hair. And I'm just lightly tapping away. The blade will interact with my finger so the blade will touch my finger, but you know, I've got the control down and the balance. We call this closed razor cutting. Closed razor cutting means you get a little bit more cleanness with your razor. And we just wanna put the foundation in. So this is pressing right the way in. How's your angle, Rebecca? I'm gonna move. You gotta move. I'm gonna go over here. You got the move? There you go, she's moved. All right, so right here, we're working on what was the undercut. We're not undercutting it anymore. And we're simplifying the shape. We're simplifying the shape. Now this is the razor comb, very important tool. A lot of people don't believe that, but my razor cuts are nowhere near as good without this razor comb. I will be in Los Angeles in West Hollywood this weekend coming. I have a two day class, Sunday, Monday, razor cutting with me. It's a personal class, it'll be a booty class. And we have five or six people on the class, so I could definitely handle a couple more. We also have our American Wave certification that team is flying in to do. So if you wanna learn American Wave or get certified, or if you wanna do some razor cutting with me, Go to erosiopro.com and sign up. Ian asks, um, any do's and don'ts when using the razor close to the hairline? Well, there's loads of do's and there's loads of don'ts. Don't cut your client. That's a big don't. Always try and keep, I think a big, a key thing is always keep the blade away from the skin. Yeah. So right in here, I'm not taking much out here because this was the undercut. So this is gonna thicken her hair up. Keep my fingers nice enough. I always try and keep the blade positioned away. So not too close. You gotta keep an eye. Most people when they start cutting, they, they, they forget they've got this long razor in their hand. So keep the razor away from the client. You'll see here that I'm not putting any hair off. Not cutting any hair off right there because uh, that was the undercut, so it was longer on the underneath and, and shorter on the top because it was undercut. But we're going to find once I get above this point, I presume there will be more hair to cut. Eileen wants to know would you say that these cuts are in this year? I think this is a cut that's always going to be in. Yeah? I think this kind of a look is always going to be in. I'm a big fan of shorter styles. I'm a big fan of uh, texture. I think texture is very much a, a cool thing. And we have a great service called American Wave that helps to dial up the texture. But what I'm doing right here with the tip of my blade is I'm dialing up the texture. So by just using the tip of the blade, I'm actually just adding a little bit more texture into, uh, into, the, into the underneath. You always gotta look at the head shape, the head shape here. We've gotta kind of build the head shape a little bit better, I think. So just right in here, just doing a little technique called tipping, which just helps me take out a little bit of the thickness. Oh, there's my little bunny, oh, my little playboy. It's right there. Rick says he can't wait for class. See you this Sunday. Oh, Rick, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a great time, buddy. He also wants to know what cuts will we be covering this Sunday? You're gonna be covering uh, this cut, long layers, short layers, 
graduation, tight graduation. You're really going to cover every element of uh, it's a lot more elemental than it is haircuts. It's very elemental. So, what that means is you'll be learning how to get this blade to, to really develop elements for you. And then you'll be able to apply them to different haircuts. Razor Fundamentals is all about the precision and the practice of getting the blade to interact with the hair. You know, this weekend I was in the IBS show. That's the International Beauty Show, not the Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Yeah? That was the, uh, they call it the IBS, God knows why. Maybe it's the food of the Jacob Javits that throws everybody into chaos. What did you have a, did you have a hot dog there? Or? No, I suck so, with bananas. Some salty peanuts. <laughs> it's bad for your digestive system. Oh, you know what they were selling? It was selling, uh, and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> dog, dog meat on them. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so what was I saying? What was the question? I yes. <laughs> oh. I can't remember now. It's gone. When it comes back, I will let you know. What was the, was there a question? I think you were going to tell <laughs> us something about being at IBS. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, oh yes, I know what I was going to say. I was watching everybody cut hair. Yes, I was watching all my ambassadors cut hair. I'm watching them all of my hairdressers cut hair, watching them how they work with a razor and how they use it. And it was good to see. You never, you never uh, stop losing it. You gotta use it and uh, you know, it's all about the intention. There's a thing called feel and the feel of your work uh, comes out better with a razor, I think. And if you get that feel right, you're winning. You can see the guide I'm working towards here. Yeah, so I think that uh, Lena's got a great look. Yeah, she's got a great look. Her hair was good, but it was looking a little bit kind of lost. The shape was there, but it was kind of lost. This is going to simplify it, add a little bit more structure. You want it to have that kind of distressed feel, but you also want it to have that precision so that it can look polished when, need to, when it needs to look polished. We're trying to polish it up, but still keep it kind of rough and kind of uh, loose at the same time. And the pictures she showed me, they kind of were like very casual, natural. So we got to work into that. Notice how I don't wet the hair down so much. That's what I say all the time. I allow the hair to live a little. Let it slowly, let it slowly start to, uh, to dry while you cut. We call that planing, what I just did right here. It's the most advanced, working with the plane of the blade. And when I say the plane of the blade, that's the full shaft of the blade. Combing that hair slightly back, nice and tight. And then just allow that hair just, just softly taper the ends away. That's what we like to see. So on a two day razor class, there'll be very little demonstration. It's pretty much all hands on. We get the razor in the hand and we work on your technique. That's what we work on. We work on perfecting the technique. Now there's loads of razor cutters out there right now. We've trained a lot of them. There's loads of people teaching the razor and I've trained a lot of them. Yeah, I've trained a lot of them. If, they, if the technique's similar to mine, you know, a lot of them I've done a lot of training with, yeah? That, that there's a different technique out there. If you came from like the Bumble family, it's a much more of a heavier, stiffer hand. Not wrong, just different. But if someone's using this tool in the way in which I use it, then the, pretty much they've probably studied with me. When I came to America, the only salon that I knew that was really razor in was the salon I came to work for, which was a salon called Bumble and Bumble. Yeah, and... Um, Having worked there for a few years, I got to hone my skill a little bit more, but I'd already been razor cutting, so I hadn't learned that bumble way, which was really pioneered by uh, Howard and Raymond. So really what I've done is I've evolved my skill uh, in a diff slightly different way. It's like never look at what other people are doing. You keep an eye on what people are doing, but stay focused on what you're doing. That's always been my kind of simple strategy for
Alexis says hello. Good morning, Alexis. I'm working on the ABC, on the NBC thing. I'll let you know. Kelly Boy also says if hello. Anything works out. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Okay. Uh oh. Oh. Got a little short surprise here, have you, Lena? Hey, you see, you've been busy with those clippers. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Fine teeth of the comb. Flat of the blade. This is open razor stroke. Ray says, I love watching you use that razor. I so wish I could cut with one. Someday I have to learn more. All you need to do is come on a class, get the right, get this tool, get the razor. Come to the class, it's completely teachable. I can completely train you. Yeah, and we have classes all the time. But if you don't practice, if you don't get one, you don't practice, you'll never know. But it's uh, something that I've seen so many people pick it up and become masters. It's just practice, just like everything else. And if you can cut hair, then the best scissor cutters make the best razor cutters. Because the best scissor cutters know sectioning, they know combing, they have a discipline already. With a razor, you need to be ultra disciplined because you are texturizing the hair a lot. So you've got to learn the sweet spot. So right there, there's the control. And whatever you've got in your hand, it's kind of a mirror image of what you've left on the head. Learn to allow the hair to dry as you work. All right, I'm gonna come around that side because I'm gonna do the shorter side first. So you can see how we get that to sit in. The nice thing is, is uh, just head up just a little, Lena, thanks. Oh, no, you're perfect, just relax. Normal, there you go. Woo! My choreography. <laughs> Don't be stealing none of my moves for your show. <laughs> yeah, over just a little. We're gonna come through here and we'll find nothing to cut. Yeah, nothing to cut. But what we'll do is we'll run that in, and then we'll take second section, and now we'll find something to cut. <clears throat> Candace asks, are you going to the Orlando premiere hair show with a hands-on class? Uh, I'm not sure yet, Candace. I probably think there's a good chance I will do that. I have a hands-on class at the Chicago show in two weeks. So that's very possible uh, that I will be at Premiere. Before Premiere, I will be, uh, I'm also, well, we've got a lot before Premiere, so there's no point even talking about it. But I, what I do want to talk about is I'm going to Salt Lake City and Denver. And I'll be in Salt Lake City March the 24th, I believe. As, can you remember if that's right, Rebecca? I don't know. I think it might be Sunday the 24th. It's definitely Sunday. And then Sunday, Monday the 25th, I'm gonna be in Denver. So uh, we're gonna be doing some like little, little tours around the country sharing our vision. So $25 a ticket gets people in to come and see what we're about. It just helps to pay for the venue. I've got a great venue in Salt Lake City. That's on Sunday, March the 24th. Stay tuned on my Facebook, on my Instagram as we start to really talk about that. And I'm looking forward to Salt Lake City because I hear it's a, a really nice hairdressing town and there's a lot of salt there. And then, uh, and then Denver, we're excited to be in Denver too. We have some great salons and great accounts in Denver, Colorado. And then for sure, when we hit the summer, which we're barely just out of winter, I will be in Orlando in June, but I don't know what the schedule is yet. I've worked quickly all the way up to the party. What I'd like you to do, Dana, is bring over, come, come what's your, is it Kelsey? Come over here, Kelsey. My choreographer, come stand here. Yeah, look this way, so everyone can see you. Oh, look, she, she's, she's got the moves. Show us what we're gonna do. Bangs. Bangs. You just didn't want to feel left out with this girl, you know, so you just put a little, what is that, is that like a? Moon and the sun. Uh, that's not a sun. That's a that's a fish's <laughs> eyeball. That's a fish's eyeball. That's a fish's eyeball. Show us your pictures. Who is that? I have no idea. 
Did we do that? That was like one of our haircuts. I know that girl. I think, I'm, I think that might be an American wave. I think we used her. How did you find out about this? Um, I got contacted on Instagram, actually. Great. You ever had your hair cut here before? I haven't. But Never. No. So there's the inspiration. So let's wash American Wave Rehab Submerged. She's got a lot of hair. So we've got a lot of change. We're going to layer it. We're going to put some bangs in and change your face. Okay? So that'll be fun. So American Wave re Rehab and then Submerged Condition. Come to the back wash, please. That'll be a fun makeover. Just like my beauty right here. Ian says, I'm loving my Arojo razor, but like you say, it's about feel. And I would say it's taken me so far for it to start to feel as comfortable as at my scissors. How many chairs do you have in your salon, Ian? Let's ask him that question. See if he'll respond. Because maybe I, we've, been saying we should come, <coughs> we've been saying we should come to Manchester to maybe teach a razor class. So maybe I could do it in your shop. How many chairs do you have? And are you open on a Sunday? He says 10. And are you open on Sundays? People work on Sundays in England. It's been such a long time. I don't know. We sure do work here every day. So just tapering that. You're looking at the taper. That's what you're tapering the hair away. He said yes, only closed Christmas day. Ah, nice, good job. That was good, yeah, feel good. So far, she's happy, we're in good shape. Now I can find out what she shaved on this side. Who knows? Who knows, we'll find out, my friend. Aha, uh -huh, nothing, nothing, she left one side alone. Morgan says she's so excited to come out on March 24th for Scissor Than Razor. Oh, that's gonna be such a fun class. Scissor then razor is going to be a great class, and we can't wait to have you. Always check out all of our classes <clears throat> on arojonyc.com. Download our app, arojosocial.com, and stay connected because uh, we'll let everybody know what we do and where we do it. It's a great way for us to stay connected. So now I'm on the opposite side. This is the star side. I'm just coming through. Just be gentle around the ears there. You see she's got just one extra piercing. And I'm just gonna delicately just melt that hair away. Short little piston motion. Just taps away at the hair. I'll come to the front now and I just check to make sure that we're in good alignment. A little harder because she's Obviously missing a piece. I think we're in good alignment. <clears throat> Kate asks, can you explain the bangs parting really clearly for me? Well, we're not doing any bangs on, the, on here. But when we do, if you stick around, we will be doing the bangs on Kelsey. So then I will. But she, uh, we're not doing any bangs on, uh, on Lena. She wants the same kind of look that she showed us. But we want a... Um, we want it without bangs. As I move up the head, the more the razor moves up and down, the more hair we take away. So as I move up and down, the more hair we take away. Jeannie asks, do you have any plans to package the ultraviolet shampoo and conditioner in liters? Our clients love it. Uh, that's a great question. At this stage, we have not got a plan for that. We do have small pumps for the small bottles if someone's interested. The reason we couldn't make bigger sizes is because uh, we needed to make way too many. And seeing as we are an independently run boutique product company, we have to kind of work within our means. So when we come to make the next batch, that's what we're gonna be working on, making a larger size. But literally, we, uh, we're pretty fully stocked with our products. But if you want a little pump for the back bar, that's what we have in our salon in New York. We have the small pumps that also make it a little bit easier to use. 
Running a product company is a lot of work. <clears throat> Not for the faint-hearted. We've been in business now for 10 years. That's a long time to have a manufacturing process, a product company, and uh, it's been one hell of a journey. And we continue to push forward. We just launched our distribution in Florida with Salon, with Prime Salon Services. So we'll be in Florida on April the 15th. And I'll be sharing my, uh, I'll be sharing my uh, techniques and my inspiration. Hopefully, we can build. The more we build as a brand, the more I can do. At this stage of the game, we're trying to really zone in on building, um, and it's really everything gets reinvested back into the company. Eileen asked, "What would you say is the most popular haircut this year?" Ooh, Eileen. Good question. I tell you what, I've been doing a lot of short bobs, a lot of short bobs and a lot of bangs. That's what I've been doing a lot of, a lot of short bobs and a lot of bangs. So I would say that is kind of what I feel is really trending. We're going off the shoulder with that long lob into something a little bit shorter. So I think it's still very wearable. Everybody wants something that's wearable. I think we're away from that soft beach wave, but it'll always be popular because so, it looks so pretty. And I think we'll slowly but surely move away from the super bright baby. <coughs> <laughs> Okay. Gretchen says this is her favorite way to start every Thursday. Well, I'm glad Gretchen, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. I appreciate your support. You can promote us. That would be great. I'd like to do a big shout out to everybody that helped me. We really tried to petition a lot of people to uh, help save the beauty school business in New York City. The mayor, you know, the, uh, the governor, Cuomo had a bill that was trying to, uh, it would have made trade schools like my school kind of redundant. So thanks to everybody. That's the nice thing about social media. I think it helps to get the word out. Unless there's a blackout. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. Working all the way up. Working all the way up. Use the fine teeth of the comb. Comb the hair. This is a beautiful comb available on erosiopro.com. Comes in white and black. You need black if you're using some with bright colored hair, your comb will change color. And the white color, it's just really nice so you can see. Great for scissor over comb too. I'm gonna spin it around to the mirror so I can have a look and see the overall shape. And I think we're in good shape here. You can see I think she's not like the right shape. Little, if there's a little more weight in here that I'm gonna loosen up. So you do kind of like the structure of the cut, which is what we did. Comb this hair back. Come and lock here, Rebecca. Because you can see. Oh, I can spin around a little bit. Okay. You see? You gotta comb this hair back. See how the top of this just hangs over? So now we'll comb this hair back and lift this comb. Notice how I did do too much spraying down. The hydro mist puts enough moisture in the hair. And we're just gonna point cut. We call it tipping when it's point cutting with a scissor, with a razor. Point cutting, otherwise known as tipping. So comb this hair all the way back, all the way back, and then use the flat of the blade. That's the planing, taking all of the meat. Now right here, there's not much meat in the sandwich, so we're gonna make it even skinnier by using the tip. And I'm looking for the translucency in the shape. When you cut hair with a razor, you put, sh you put space into the hair. When you put space into the hair, what happens is the hair moves a little bit more freely. Because there's more room for it to move around. Lena's got very thick, dense hair. She did have a undercut, so she's got a little bit of space on the underneath. But right now we're putting a lot of space in through the, throughout the whole entire head. Tip of the blade. And you 
shake it, we shake it, and have a look. Ian says, Nick, I'm sure you've had some amazing product stories so far. Can you share with us a big standout memory? Of? Product story. Product story. My standout memory of the product story was when I first got my bottle of shampoo and I went into my shower at the gym with my daily shampoo completely finished, it was the first product. I was so excited <clears throat> to actually have not just my product, but my product in my bottle. And it was the first completed product. The run was made, they shipped me some straight. I was dying to see it. I got there, I got into the shower, I started washing myself and all of a sudden I started to realize there was red all over the place. I thought I'd cut myself. And then soon I realized that the labels all washed off <laughs> so now I had uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars invested and uh, the products were damaged that was like a terrible story oh. painful but you know r running a product company takes a lot of uh, commitment it's a lot of work it's hard uh, there's a lot of competition and, uh, you know, we continue to, uh, to fight for it. We have over 600 salons carrying a Rojo product across America. We just had our ambassadors in town. Our core key team of ambassadors, they were helping to share uh, the culture of a Rojo. So it was really exciting. I, I want you to set up over there, Dana, mm -hmm. with a diffuser. Okay. Okay, and you got to dry it, yeah? Now, we we'll think we've got to start thinking product here. And I think product here, I'm going to use uh, fiber. There's a little bit of fiber. So let's get me the fiber and get me the shine looks oil too. And we're going to diffuse the hair. It's almost done, I think. I think it looks like we kind of did a perfect, perfect shape. Because of the space underneath it made this that little silver. I do want to go through from the front, just a section here. It's like you only, you only know when you know. So you're looking for the density throughout. You go through the density and you can just tip in and just take out just a little bit more. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's precision based razoring. I think a lot of people think when the razor, they think it's like just a texturizing tool. And it is a texturizing tool, but it's a craftsman's tool. And this is a craft. Donna asks, how often do you change blades? Uh, every cut. Every cut to be on the safe side. I was a young novice hairdresser or a young novice razor cutter. Let me refresh that. I would go through every cut with a new blade. For me now, I can use two. I can get usually get two blades out of a cut. Yeah, usually get it out twice. Two cuts out of a blade. I think I said it wrong. Two blades out of a cut. Two cuts out of a blade. Shut up, Cali Class. Shut up, uh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. All right. I will do a finish, just a quick finish. I'll show you what I'm gonna do for a quick finish before I go on to the next. Pick up my scissor, your Rojo BMAC. This is a nice thing to do when you're young razor cutter. And then just literally, let's just skim through the edges. Lifting the hair straight out. And this will just help you. Just in case you missed one or two little pieces. This is really, I like to call this sealing the cuticle. I'm just giving the cuticle a little seal. I'm gonna change my mind on product. I was 50-50 in my brain. I'm gonna go for texture paste instead of that fiber. So this is just taking the edges out. Are you ready, Kelsey, for your bangs? So ready. <laughs> bang, bang, she shut me down. 
Han says, good morning, Nick. We love these Thursday morning lessons at Capelli Salon Academy. Oh, well, thanks, Han. My pleasure. We, we love having you join in and watch us. We appreciate it. And uh, Ian asks, I know that we don't have Erosia products yet in Manchester, but what do you have to do to become an ambassador in the USA? Uh, you have to connect to us. That's it. That easy. Reach out to us. We open up some new about accounts this weekend. We are a non-exclusive brand. Uh, we, we, what we mean by that is we want to help salons grow. And people that really join with us, they're looking for all the right reasons. We're really good as a business at helping young businesses grow, young salons grow and get better. That's what we're really good at. We're really good at that as a business. So we do have an application process, very simple and we start to build, we talk about what our expectations are. We talk about our expectations based on what the salon is. It's not a one size fits all. That's definitely not how it goes. It's not a one size fits all, so, but ultimately at the end of the day, we do our best when we take on accounts and then we develop them and we evolve them. It's not just about the, uh, the, the product itself. It's about the uh, commitment, the connectivity, and it's about trying to make salons get um, more successful. Clean your client off. So she looks fabulous. She does. My little cocktail martini, anybody? Martini, anybody? See, I didn't know there was going to be a martini glass there waiting for me. Who knows what I can find here? Oh, nothing. Pimple. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Lena. Shauna right. says, awesome tips. Love that Sunny and Cher song. Yes, me too. Okay. Shine up soil. I'm going to do a little... I'm going to do something that I don't do too much. Four pumps of that. Pass me the uh, texture paste. Texture paste. It's a little cocktail, this. I tend to cocktail more on the head, but this one I know is going to be a good cocktail in the hand. And a dollop of paste in the hand. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna marry those together. So this Shine Look Soil is gonna give the hair more slip and the texture paste is gonna give the hair more texture. So, I don't think I've done this combination before but it feels right. See how I get a nice pliable paste, pliable liquid. The fiber is like a little bit like what I've just made but I, I don't think it's gonna have enough texture. And seeing that she doesn't really have too much layers in here, it's more just pieced out. I'm just gonna work it in. And we're gonna diffuse it dry because I've got a full cut to do. So what we'll do is we'll lock it in some twists, which we do a lot. That's my film work, please. Uh, oh, this looks like a nice new comb. Freshy. A freshy. Okay, hold that. So we'll see us do this a lot. We're gonna try and build that little bit of texture into the hair. Just twist. I don't wanna make the hair heavy. That's why I soften the paste. Twist. Twist. See the shortness underneath? This is the sharp piece underneath. That was the old undercut. Twist. Now we're going to this, the other side. One. Now it down. I didn't want to over wet the hair. Now twist this again. Twist it in as much as possible. This will just give her as much kick, flip, as possible. Section again. Twist it around, keep twisting the hair around, locking it in, and then I want some uh, texture spray. Gretchen says, I'm going to grow my hair so I have an excuse to come to New York so you can cut it off. I'm here for you, Gretchen. Whenever you're ready. Give me the beach wave. Wave mist. Let's get a bit of wave mist in here. 
doing a shoot this weekend in LA. We're excited for that. It's for our American Wave brand. This is Wave Mist. This is a Rojo product, Wave Mist. And all I want you to do, without touching it, is dry it. Okay? Don't touch it, just dry it. And you're not allowed to touch it. Okay? Promise? She's going to touch it. I know she's going to touch it. Alright. For a minute there, I think I lost myself. For a minute there, I lost myself. Does it say? Wicked. She's wicked. Okay, Mrs. Wicked. Go with Dana, and I'll see you in a bit. Dana? Quite the camera there. Okay. Come over here, Kelsey. Let's jump in. Number two. Kelsey is a famous choreographer. She's a legend in her own stilettos. And they are kind of a little stiletto ish. Let's have a look. Wow, looking good. Okay, so we're going to do show the audience again what you are hoping to achieve. So that's a lot of layers. You're gonna lose a lot of hair. Are you scared? Should I be? I'm asking you, are you scared? She's got like a, a lot. Are you scared? I think I'm in good hands. She's in good hands. You want to good hands? Are you scared? No, you're not scared. Are Kate says she's super excited to finally learn the parting correctly. Who is? Kate is. Okay, Kate, here we go. Bang, bang, she shut me down. So, first thing we do, Kate, see how she's got like a lot of wiggles here. So, have you ever had bangs before? Years ago. Years ago. So, this is what we do, Kate. We'll take the center section, look, right up here, zip right the way down. Center of the head. She's got a nice petite skull and a lot of hair. So you've got to kind of always kind of measure. Look at look at how the hair jumps here too. See that? Will that will that even come down as a bang? Well, we're going to give it a shot. Whatever happens, it's going to look awesome. Eddie says, hello, Nick. It was nice to see you again in New York. Oh, who's that? Eddie Burgos. Oh, hey, Eddie. How are you, man? Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming out to see us. Okay. You take a nice, deep triangle. Now, look. Look how close her hairline is to her eyebrow. Like one finger. On this side, one finger. So she's got a low hairline, which is not a problem. But this is what we're going to do for our low hairline. So there's your, there's your triangle. There's your triangle. The first thing that I'm going to do, right here, is I'm going to make a bit of space. I'm going to make a bit of space for the bangs. So this is a good bit. 
because if we don't make any space for the bangs, it's not going to look good. Or it's not going to look as good. These are like little tips. Keep that out. So this area here is going to go. Now with a razor, I want you to watch this, guys. With a razor, you stay there, Rebecca. I'm going to come to you to make sure you see it. With a razor, you can do things that is so much softer than with a scissor. So right in here, the temple hair, I'm going to cut short. So right behind. And that's going to tighten that up. It's going to collapse and create a bit more space for my bang. Now when I comb it, it does, you don't even notice. Yeah, it just blends in. Let's have a look at the other side, which I think might be a bit trickier, but I like it when it's tricky. So now let's just have a look here. So you don't want to go too deep. It's really temple hair only. You don't want to take it too deep, you'll really ruin it. So you gotta know, so right here, I changed my section just a little. Keep that out of the way. And we lift this up. And right there. And this piece here, I'm gonna simplify. See how messy that is? I'm gonna simplify it before I cut the bang. Press that on your lap. So right here, I want to create space for the bangs to live. She won't even notice this. This is like such a hidden little piece. She has so much hair. But we want to create a little bit of space so that the bangs have a chance. So you see that? Just cleans that up. So right now she's got more space for the bangs. So we're going to comb this hair and we're going to damp it down. You know it's good when, we, when it's almost empty, it means everyone's been using it. Put it in. I need to keep it wet because I want to control it. Now we're going to go along with these bangs. And because of the texture, I'm going to cut from the inside out. Now there's like loads of different ways to do this. Loads of different ways. But I'm going to go from the inside out. So I split it down the center again. Come back to the side. First section. Look at how long I'm going to cut this. My fingers, like my knuckles, right at the nose. I'm going to keep it long to begin with. And I'm going to be short to long. But straight away, that hair's going to jump up. You see how long it is? Straight away, that hair's going to jump up. Okay. Section on the opposite side. Exactly the same. Come the hair over. On this side, we use more the heel at the back of the blade. Put the blade away from the face. And that's your, there's your beginning. No going back now. Bang, bang, bang. No going back. Section two. Straight section. Come it forward. This blade moving. A little bit more open this time. Which means that I'm moving the blade up and down more and creating a lot more texture. And then section two on this side. Derek says good morning. Good morning, Derek. One of the things that I noticed about the show is all of our ambassadors, 
working together was we've really developed a team out of friendship and uh, intention. So I have to tell you, it's a very exciting uh, moment in the Erosio brand because we are gearing up to really develop and evolve our ambassador artistic team. And I got just, I got the right people to do it. I got the right people to do it. And you like to see those people when you come and see us at one of our trade shows. So, you know, it's a, it's a, a team builds a brand. A, a, a person can maybe be the leader, the founder, there's a founder, can be a person. But a team builds the brand. We've done so much in the hair business, but we have so much more to do. Tip of the blade. Now, I kept it long because it's going to shrink. And now what I'm going to do is spin around here. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to layer this side. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to start to layer it. I'm going to open it all the way out. The razor is a brilliant tool for that. Because with a scissor, I'd have to probably cut more off. I want to get shape and structure into the haircut. So I'm going to use the sharp piece of the bang right here to start and begin my layering. This is one of my specialities, this long layer technique. And I've really worked it out with the razors so, so well. So you'll see there's the touch point right here, the guide point right there. So we go straight in. I'm trying to carve out and show as much of a cute face as possible. And then what we do is we want to get into the layers heavy so that she has that heavy look. Not kind of like, she doesn't want to look like a 70s rock star. She wants to look like a hot 70s pinup. The difference. So that's kind of our focal point. We want to keep the heaviness and the weight in the hair too. We keep the heaviness and the weight in there. There's a little channeling just right in here. By channeling, you put space in, so it's slightly different. Section two. She has a lot of hair, so you gotta stay in the focus. Yeah, if you're not focused, you won't get. So again, working very fast from short to long. Get that razor moving before it gets into the hair. So when the razor moves, then when you push it into the hair, you just melt that hair away. And then I can comb it forward and I can just lightly channel out just a little. Section three. Karen says, watching the camaraderie and talent at the Aroja booth at IBS was inspiring. Thanks, Karen. Coming it through, looking for that section, looking for your guide. I can see it and I can feel it. So when I see it, I'm looking for the guide. It might be hard for you to see online, on, online here, but I can also feel it. And I gotta have what I like to call as good muscle memory. So that means remember where your hand was. So you've got that muscle memory. Now she has so much hair that it's going to expand. When you lay a thick hair, it expands. So always be ready and be aware of that. Keep your sections small so that you don't lose yourself. If your sections are too big, it'll be hard for you to follow. So keep your sections small. And just work it right the way through. Notice how I practice really good combing. Fine teeth of the comb. Notice how the comb is followed by my hands. So my hands follow the comb as I just melt that hair away. Oh, that was a money. This point here, when I reach there, that'll be my pivot point. That'll be my point that I'm gonna stop 
I'm gonna, I just have been moving, 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 stop here, and then we fan. So it's parallel sections before you get to that pivot point, get to that pivot point, and then you fan. Open razor, nice open razor stroke. Look how long these layers are. It's still gonna be nice and long and heavy through the back. So she gets all the volume. She gets the volume from the back and maximum shape around the front. I can go back in with the bangs later. Once you cut them, you let them sit there for a bit. You keep them on the long side. We connect all the layers into the bang. And then we can go back and we can uh, bang it some more. Sounds sturdy, that doesn't it? We can actually, um, you know, put more shape in if we choose. We can actually tighten it up if we choose, and you know, make more of the bang right at the end. So it's like a safety net, and I like the safety nets because when you've got a safety net, when you do a client for the first time. There's like an osmosis. You kind of feel the energy of the client. And if you can get onto the same energy, like the unspoken word, if you can get onto the same energy, then, uh, then you can actually do a really good job. But that's the hardest part, is getting onto the same energy, making sure that you're right on point with your client and she feels comfortable with you. So I'm pivoting all those sections around. I'm elevating the hair up now. More elevation. I'm just pushing that razor through the hair. We only direct it forward so the layers get longer towards the back. <clears throat> One more section, and now we're to the opposite side. That's the final section. As I reach the center back, you might not be able to see it from there. I will be coming through the back of the head too, so don't worry. You kind of approach it from every angle. When a client has a lot of hair, you have to move a little quicker. You don't have any more time. Give you a lot of time, so when the plant has more hair, you move faster. You're up to speed, tempo. I'll just have a shake and have a look. Let's see if we can get in there. So you can see, this side's not cut, this side is cut. You can see you get in this cascade. You can see we've got some length right here on the front. She's got the introduction of some magic around the face. And you can see how this hair is starting to come to life. Now this hair, see the difference? And now we're out of time, so she has to come back next week <laughs> for the remainder. Now I'll do it. I'm going to switch that one out because that one's almost empty. And again, just my hydro mist. Gonna spray. Spray it down. It's such a light. It's just there's such a light mist. That's why it's called hydro mist. Because it's a mist as opposed to a heavy spray. And now let's section this hair out again from here. Yep. And then you're gonna take a little piece from here. And you're going to connect and create kind of a curve. You say a curve because you curve it round to keep the length. Both sides have to be consistent, but they're sisters, not twins. When you're doing something like this, it's yes, you've got to have perfection, but sometimes a slight imperfection adds to the perfection. It's more organic. If you think of something that's more organic, you're going to say to yourself, well, oh, it's not going to be like, as if it was plastic mold injected. It's 
more of an organic feel. So I take my first section, work through with the fine teeth, the flat of the blade as I taper down. There's section one done. What I'll do is I'll refresh my memory from the opposite side and I'll come this forward. And I'll kind of have a look and see. Because you're looking for the same kind of feel. The side might be a little shorter, which I'm happy about. Now I know, and I can just kind of blurry. And I say blurry because it is. When you are razor layering, the layers can be a little blurry. When you're scissor layering, you're cutting blunt lines in, so you want them to match. When you're razor layering, it can be a little blurry because you've got one piece of steel. Cute. You can see her face, you know, you got to look and see, you see how she looks, see how the hair's kicking. She's got gorgeous hair. Yeah, we really had two great looking girls today. So remember, I said maybe it was a drop shorter on the opposite side, um, shorter on this side. So, stay with it, I think we're in good shape. you got to allow yourself to have that feel in the work. If you don't have no feel in your work, what's the point? It's not like making a... You know, uh, it's not like boiling a kettle. Every uh, every client you do is like creating magic for that client. You're gonna create the look. And again, just a little freedom. Some free channels right in there. Kate asks, how do you know how to how deep to make the bang triangle? Well, you know, Kate, it's a good question. You have to assess where the hair's going to fall. I would, this is what I would say. Start making them a lot deeper than you feel comfortable with and see what happens. You do have to have a little bit of a trial and error. But, you know, don't do that on a paying client. Find somebody that you like the look of and ask them if you can do the hair. And then learn yourself. There's one thing I can't teach. Experience. The only thing I can teach is technique. But guess what? Great hairdressers have a lot of experience. <clears throat> so experience is something, it's a little trial and error. I can't tell you how many times I've did things and I tried to conceptualize the idea. <clears throat> then when I came to execution, it came out awful. Because my skills as such, the client never really knew, or the guest never really knew. But I knew, and if I didn't practice, then I wouldn't learn. So you do have to have uh, that practice mode. Most hairdressers are more timid. Uh, and if you're too aggressive, then you, you get an unhappy client. So don't do it on clients. Find some great muses, some great models, some nice looking people to cut and take it from there. Nick, uh, Ian says, last week you had golden rules to remember on haircuts. Is there any with this one that when you first started to now? Well, with this kind of hair, a golden rule, don't go too deep. Don't open the blade too much on this kind of hair. If you open the blade too much on this kind of hair, you'll make it fuzzy. So don't be up here. Always stay in the final two inches. That's a nice one. <laughs> this is a touch point now because I'm down into the behind the ear. So I'm just going to go to the opposite side, which is starting to dry a little. And I'm going to grab it. I'm going to stand in front of her. I'm going to pull it forward. And I'm getting heavier now. Which means I'm going to lift it more. Now I know that the hair shrunk a little because it's uh, shrunk a little because it's curls and it's drier. Always keep looking at your client's features. Keep looking at the client's face. Make sure she looks hot. Make sure you can find the niceness in her features. It's the way the hair interacts with the, with the body, with the face shape. It's the way the hair interacts. I dropped the chair down so I could get a little better angle and I could lift it and get some sharpness in there. 
You know, my, you know, when you learn how to cut hair, it's like being in architect school. You're learning lines, you're learning proportion, all kinds of that stuff. When, and you're learning technique, you're learning how to follow something. When you work as a, uh, as a stylist in a salon, you become more of a, more of a sculptor, more of an image consultant. Good job. Just hang out, okay? We'll be back with you in a bit. We're ahead on schedule, we're doing perfect. Now I said that, something's gonna happen. <laughs> the roof's gonna collapse. Come on, Dana, let's get over here. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. Shall we introduce you all to Dana? She's our in hello in-house talent scout. If we if <laughs> anyone brings a picture, she tells us who it is. And she always says the same name. <laughs> so right here, lifting out, I'm just gonna channel take a little bit. Right out of there. Let's get the head to kind of cascade. Let it dry a little bit. David says, good morning. I really enjoyed you guys at the show this past weekend. Oh, well, thank you. Is that David Brink? Yep. Thank you, David. We're home safely. And thanks for coming to support us. Next trade show, Chicago. This weekend, however, I'm in LA teaching a razor class. West Hollywood. If anyone's interested, you can sign up at erosiopro.com. We'll be there all weekend. We also have American Wave certification. So we're, we're, we're waving. We've also got American Wave certification in North Carolina this weekend and South Carolina. So we've got a double. We got Wave certification for all weekend. And then the following week, I will be in Denver and I will be in Salt Lake City. I'm doing a little bit of a tour uh, of Utah and Denver. So uh, Utah and Colorado. I'll be in. Utah on Sunday in Salt Lake. Tell your friends, please. I'm gonna start to connect. $25 to come out and hang out. I'll be doing a couple of demonstrations live. Q&A, connecting. I've never been to Salt Lake City, so I'm excited to see what Salt Lake is all about. And it's a big Paul Mitchell country, I think. And uh, maybe some Vader country up there. So that'll be interesting. And then I can go to Denver. We're excited for Denver too. I've been to Denver many times. Everything's legal. And then after that, we go to Chicago for the Chicago Midwest Beauty Show. Well, it's not called that anymore. It shows all there. It's the Chicago America's Beauty Show from the Cosmetology Association. And then from there, I'm going to be heading to Las Vegas for Interquafio. In between all of that, I'm going to try and do about a uh, hundred haircuts, and uh, and then I'm also going to oversee the construction, which hopefully by the end of this month will be in the final phase, the construction of uh, my tr new Tribeca renovation. We renovated the Tribeca salon to make it bigger and better, and we're launching a new platform called the Rojo Digital, where there's going to be a lot of this type of connectivity and connection is going to be a lot at a Rojo Digital. So that's something to look for. I think we're getting the look, so I think we're in good shape. I can feel it, I can see it. I'm going to come through that from both sides. I've not come from the back yet, but I will. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through the top. The top. We can find this uh, an iron in a few minutes too, a smoothing iron. And a wand. I'm sure you can find something. And this saloon of mine. So I'm just going to take a little bit more out of the bangs. I'm going to come across the top. Ian says there's salt in Salt Lake. There is salt. Has Ian been to Salt Lake City? I don't think so, but I never know. You never know where anybody has been in this world. So this is tipping and I'm taking a bit out. I'm just kind of coming across the top. 
I'm coming forward and I'm looking down on my client and I'm seeing, you know, kind of like, I'm trying to see exactly how this head's going to sit. And I'm running it deeper. <coughs> I'm running it deeper. <coughs> and then what I do is I come in and I channel and I channel and I channel. Yeah, it's called the English channel. Ian says, no, it's too salty. Uh-huh. Such a delicate with his diet, that's right. So combing it through. If the hair gets too dry, don't razor it. Don't raise the dry hair. That's a definite no. No raising of dry hair. But you can channel out. Kind of organic and feel what you got. I will be doing some scissor work here, too. Don't forget, on the 24th, we've got a three-day class coming up here in New York. Scissor, then razor. So we have a great class coming up here in New York. Scissor, then razor. It's the 24th, 25th, 26th. If you want to learn my technique, you want to learn the Erosio razor style and scissor style, come to that, come to that class. The originators of razor cutting. And I only say that because I see all my friends, all my hairdressing friends passing on the knowledge and teaching class, which is kind of cute. Yeah, and you can pay for them to teach you, no problem. But it's actually more expensive than it is if you come see me. And that's funny too. The irony of it all. What do you think, Dana? It's very interesting. It's very interesting. That's what I say too. You doing okay under there, Kelsey? She's loving it. Where are you from? Louisville, Kentucky. Oh! Louisville, Kentucky. I've been there. Many times. town. How long have you been here, Louisville, Kentucky? Here. Years. Yeah? Four. Are your family still there? Do you go home? Semi often. That's a new English, isn't it? It's Kentucky English. Semi often. I'm a semi truck. Semi often. Do you have sisters? You're the only one. Wow. Oh. That's right, Mum and Dad. Did it right the first time. So we went through the top there. Now let's come back here. So that's it. Don't look at those tools for me. So like we're 90, you know, the shape's kind of there now. Now it's just detail time. The shape's there, but it's time for detail. That's really what I want to do. I'm going to scissor cut a little bit now. I don't want to be over wetting the hair down. So I scissor cut. And I'll take my BMAC 5.0s. And I'm gonna, the first thing I'll do, Rebecca, I'll spin around to you, is I've not took any off the length. So with the head down, I'm just gonna comb it. Comb it all the way down. Not gonna take any sections here. I don't need to. One, I wanna keep it nice and long. Comb it all the way down. And I'm literally gonna just chop in to the length and just refine. Chop in to the length. Just refine it. Make sure we just get those corners because we need no baseline at all. But I see this being, there's no point taking off more than that because I see this cut as being super long. Yeah? Think about the hair kind of moving around. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come through the interior. Lift the hair up and out. I'm going to chop in. It's kind of again sealing the ends, putting a little bit more shape into the ends. 
Turn that up. Go choppy choppy. Choppy choppy. Find teeth of the comb. Comb it all the way through. Those ends they gotta go. So this is a little bit of strengthening right here. A little bit of strengthening right here. And here. So just fanning or working around. Just lifting the hair up and in. This is a kind of like your little refinement of your interior layer. Same on this side. Always combing everything in. We just recently had a classic cutting class. Body position, classic clean lines, scissor cutting only. It was a big help for a lot of students. Making sure that they really understand that not many salons in America can afford to have a very well structured education program. An Erosia Ambassador Salon definitively gets connected to education. We want our salons to be connected to education. So if you're interested in thinking about bringing an Erosia product, we don't just talk about education like a lot of companies. We do it. We have it and we do it. Just chipping in. To the front, you start to see more and more of what she's got. You see, and like this is how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be straight, and then it's supposed to be kind of you know, loose and free. Kind of closing in the front. Come through now with a scissor. We're chopping even more. Can you get that, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Left and point cut. Okay, I'll just put with the iron. Okay. Take the next section. Come on over here and help me, please. We're almost done. Just lifting this up. A little choppy choppy. Choppy choppy. Point cutting. That's how the thumb doesn't go through the scissor. Yeah? What is that? Got to get the right feel in there. Take those bangs slowly so that you can get it right. I'm so, that's the best piece of technique, I think, is to cut the bangs first. When you cut the bangs first, that's the best piece of technique. Thumbs forward, chop in. Chop in. Derek asks, will Aroja still be using Goldwell color now that they're paired with L'Oreal? Uh, no. We're not using Goldwell anymore. We partnered with, uh, with L'Oreal as our color company. And that's who we're going to stay with. Can you pass me the iron? That's who we're going to stay with. I'm not really into having two color brands in my, in my uh, salon. I'm not into that at all. I'm not into it, and I'll tell you why I'm not into it. I'm not into it because uh, I don't need it. You only need one set of color. And the color that I'm going to use is going to be L'Oreal color. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these panels now, and I'm just going to kind of bevel them just a little bit. I want to make them straight. So I kind of give them a little bit more of my control. So I'm not making them straight, guys. 
I'm just gonna kind of melt them just a little. I'll just bend them just a little. Kind of coax them. This is the Erosia iron. The best thing about this iron is it's got floating plates. So you don't have to just make the hair wavy. You know, you don't have to just, just make the hair straight. You can actually create a little bit of curve in there. Just kind of smoothing that out just a little. Yeah, just to kind of show the bangs of his boss. I'm the boss, baby. A little bit of a bend, a little bit of a bevel. So you see, just drying them out, gives it that. You know, I, you, you listen to what your clients say, yeah? And she showed me a picture of short bangs and she was like, yeah, I've got a small forehead on the back then. So she kind of showed me what she didn't want and she showed me what she wanted. But she definitely wanted to have like this filling in, which is what we've got right here. A little bit more, I'm gonna blast it with the dryer and then put a little bit of product. My hair is in great shape. Looks lush, it looks thick, it's a great advertisement for me. Pass me the dryer. Inside the hair, just drying the roots. It's going to be best left dry. This. It's going to be better just left to be dried. Didn't use any fuse. I'm not going to try and dial the curl up. I don't need to. I kind of looks. It looks better. It looks more sexy. But it's got that fuzziness to it. That bounce. If it looks too polished and too refined. It doesn't look as hot. So you want to kind of have that. The lightness, that airiness to it. I do have a couple of incredible products for curly hair. So I've got some products that I will apply. What are we going to use? Flint would be nice as a finisher. Flint. Ian says, wow, that was a shed load of hair removed. She looks fantastic. Shed load. Who do we know? Is that oh, exactly? I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to go and check out some venues for my show that's coming up later on this year. I have a show later on this year. It's called Inspire. It's going to be in October. Tickets are $2,000. And it's going to be a two-day inspirational weekend. I'm checking out two venues. I'm checking out one venue. It's called The Box. It's a super cool venue in, uh, in Manhattan. Of course, guys. And the other venue that I'm checking out is a place called the Boom Boom Room, which is another great venue. So part of our, we our inspirational weekend is going to be entertainment. And the reason why the tickets are expensive is because we're going to really make it extra special. And we're going to have some great time. It's not going to be a hair show. Not a hair show. It's a show for, for salon owners team leaders, people who want to who work every day like me, tirelessly, and have to deal with the, the challenges of running a business. And it's a lot of work. So we do an event, it's called Inspire. It's, uh, it's gonna be a $2,000 ticket. 
be a little bit more affordable for our ambassador salons because they're part of our family. Yeah. You like it? You know. Good glint post here. So now we'll just use a little bit of this glint. Find out what time my first client is. Please. This is a texture shine spray. Just adds a little bit of silk shine. It's like a light spray wax. Jennifer says she loves it. Donna says it's beautiful. Thanks. So it just calms the head down. Just calms the clothes down. And it's still, it's 75% dry. Yeah, but she got the feel and what she wanted. Sometimes, you know, you've got to learn how to use your products. So you gotta, you got to learn how to use them. Let's go over and see Lena. Stay there, we're not finished yet. We have to go to the red wall for the end. That's our final shot. All right, but I think it came out like as I hoped. Over to Lena. Over here. Now raise the bar. We diffused it using our diffuser. We put in texture paste. And we broke the dryer. You got me a broken dryer. Is it broken? Yeah, it won't speed. Don't mind one speed. Give me the other one. If you break, if your dryer gets broken, guys, this dryer for sure, send it in and they'll fix it. Yeah? I mean, sometimes over, a, over the heavy duration of, uh, you know, doing hundred thousands of clients, things break, if you drop it, you bang it. But if you don't have the, listen, medium. You need all the gears. Imagine trying to drive a car without, trying, trying to drive a car without the reverse. Won't be so good, would it? No. Just loosen her up. So here we put texture spray, now we put texture paste, mixed with a little bit of the Shinelux oil to give it that little kick and flick. Little dry shampoo, little texture spray. Loosen it up, that texture spray just gives it just that, I mean that texture paste just gives it that little bit of a, I don't want to call it a wave, it's not even a wave, it's a kick. Yeah, it's not a wave, it's not only wave-ish, but it's, just, it's a kick, it's a bit looser, so it's a not so, you know, one length and flat. And then this, nice thing about the texture spray, it's brilliant. So them all out the trade show. It's so called refinish. It's a completely clear texturizer that just adds a little bit of grit. So on day one, it makes it look and feel like day two. And on day two, it makes it look and feel like day one. Time done. One. Perfect. <laughs> Good, just in case you have a long day at the office. Need a little, need a little uh, ecstasy. <laughs> it smells good. <laughs> it smells good, doesn't so it? Why not? All right, guys. So you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Go to the red wall now. Going to show everybody. Final shot. Come on over, Kelsey. Don't trip on that cable because Rebecca lost her. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> So we did our 70s kind of pin-up 
Playboy hair. And, uh, and here we did uh, Carly. A <laughs> Carly Swift claw. And uh, here's our little Playboy bunny summer symbol too. Just to make it fun. And the girls look great. Don't forget, come and check us out next week in LA or in New York. And uh, stay tuned on the Roadshow Social. Thanks for tuning in. Dana, thanks for all your help. Have a great night, guys. Have a great day. Bye.